All right, let's jam with it here. So uh, homework questions came up. Any other homework questions? I think we did 43, 45 last time, didn't we, or no? We did 45. We did 45? So let me do 43 this time. And so we'll go from there. So 1.6, number 43. These guys are called piecewise functions. So for a certain period of time, they're one function, and they change, and they become another function. That's kind of what those are. And so it does happen with lots of things here. Um, I think we mentioned what cell phone service last time, right? Uh, that's where it happens. You get a flat rate for a certain amount, and then you get uh, anybody. Uh, let's see it. The home in our home as well. Internet service at the home, right? They technically say it's unlimited, but it's as I found out. It's a gigantic amount of gigabytes, but it still does have a limit. Mine doesn't. No, okay. So I, I went on and I got the unlimited plan, but then when you scroll down, when you go and log in and stuff like that, I think it's it's a ridiculous amount. It's like uh, 7,000 gigabytes or something like that, right? Uh, and they just want to make sure that no one's just running their stuff and downloading everything on the internet. Uh, I could be wrong, but I think that I think. Actually, you might be talking about something different, but I know that some companies they throttle the speed after a certain amount of years. Okay, yes, uh huh. But True. It's so, so like, uh, for example, one of my friends, we somehow use like 256 gigabytes in a month of. All right, so let's go with f of x. Okay, this is a piecewise function. Here it is. And here's our little division. The division is at zero. So that's what you look for first. So you say, hmm, at zero, things are going to change. So for data service at five gigabytes, things might change. Or you are 10, 25 gigabytes. Okay, so notice on the functions themselves, if you guys remember, these guys, 2x minus 3. Does that sound like mx plus b? Aren't those like linear functions? I just don't like the, the last one. I don't like the way the last one is positioned because I like the X first. So I'm going to rewrite it. This I keep exactly the same, no problem. This one I'm going to write as negative X plus three because that gives me an idea how that's going to look like. Okay, are we good there for the first thing? I like things as MX plus B. Okay, with that said, Let's go with it here. So you guys talk to me here. Which one includes the zero at the top or the bottom? The bottom is including the zero. The top is not including zero because it's just x less than zero. So when we get to that spot, we're going to have to put an open dot for that guy. Not part of our equation. So can you guys graph for me off to the side, maybe in your mind, can you graph for me 2x minus 3? Should be able to do that. We should be able to go 1, 2, 3 little dot right there. Not in our major graph yet. We're just kind of thinking about this here. And we go one, two up. One over, you talk, talk to me here. Anybody not know what I'm doing right here? This is a graph of 2x minus 3, just in my mind, off to the side, not on the sheet of paper. OK. And right, now I'm going to move on to graphing it now. 2x minus 3, I'm only going to take this portion right here. I'm only going to take stuff that's less than or equal to 0. Oh, I have a highlighter. I'm going to take just this piece right here, not getting to the 0. Good there? Can you guys see the yellow? All right, so here we're going to go 1, 2, 3. Whoa, I'm on still. Yep. So one, two, three. Five, four, five. Let me go uh, positive five to negative five on my scale. Okay. So I'm taking this little piece right here, just this little portion right here. So it's not including the zero. So I'm going to have to do this. So instead of going up two and one to the right, I'm going to have to go down two and one to the left, really good there. And I could do that again, right? Because slope, slope, you could just keep on going with slope, right? Up two over one, up two over one. 
this case down two over to the left, down two over to the left. And I go over one more time. And here is my graph for the top portion. Dylan, go ahead. Any so questions? What a way of explaining it should just be like for everything under zero, use this um, use this equation. And for everything above zero, use this equation. Uh, not so much above and below, but to the left and to the right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Just like uh, if it was cell phone coverage, right? Cell phone usage, it would be a, a rate plan, fixed rate plan here, and then you get extra charges afterwards. So at the five gigabyte mark or ten gigabytes you have a change. So you use one equation up until a certain point and then you use another equation? Perfectly said. Uh -huh. Is there a different answer in the back of the book? Ooh, yeah, let's go check here. I thought there was. All right, 1.6, let me jump to 1.6. Number 43. Yes, okay. Guys, we're gonna have to switch it up. You guys ready? As I wrote it, can't see straight. This should be a plus three instead of a minus three. So plus three here instead of a minus three. Thank you so much, Abe. I would rather you guys tell me if I'm making a mistake here than not telling me, then everybody's confused. So I'm gonna go back over here. Let's erase a few things here real quick here. Thank you, Abe. Dun, 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 dun. Ah. Okay, plus three changes a few things here. So we're gonna go here. So starting at above three or right at three here, we're gonna go up two, one to the right, because that's the way we normally graph y equals mx plus b, right? Yeah. We put down the three marker, up two, one to the right. We can do it again if we like. Up two, one to the right, but we have this graph. All right, but we only want, oh. Yeah, we only want this little piece of the graph right here, up to one. Huh. That's interesting. Okay, playing with this little guy here. So then we go here, what Isabel said. So we are going to up to zero, but not including the zero. So since we're not including the zero, we can't include our dot at three either. So we go one, two, three. We have to put an open dot this time. Now we're going to have to go backwards. One, two, three, over one. We're going to have to go down one, two, over one this way. Ah, sorry. Should have been right there. And then down two more over one. At least I have a few points here I can add together. So here's my line. That's my line right there. Okay, now going the other way. Now the second graph here. This now is also mx plus b. And my slope is negative one. So negative one over one. And I'm starting off at three. Oh, that's cool. Okay, so real thing, one little quick thing that I notice is that I have connected graphs this time because my one graph actually finished where my second graph is starting. That's cool. All right, with this one though, I'm, I'm gonna go down slope one. I'm gonna go down one over one, and then down one over one. And so here's my graph like this. It would have went like this if I was just graphing negative X plus three. But since I'm only using, again, here it is, jump to the highlighter pan here. Right, I'm only using this section right here. And so now I'm gonna, if my pens could work nicely, there it is. I'm going to close this dot now because I'm starting at the same point I ended at. 
Now I'm going to go down one over one. So the slope is not as steep anymore. Down one over one. This slope had a slope of two. This slope is a slope of one. So it's not as steep. It kind of goes this direction. It's not exactly 90 degrees. It's a little bit off the 90 degrees. Boom, are we good there? Dylan, does that make sense? Cool, okay. Jamming to 1.6 number, 65 wages. Let's go with it. So let me read it. A mechanic is paid 12 bucks an hour for regular time and time and a half overtime. Oh, that, that I did not even think about. Overtime pay, right? That's also, right? You get paid a certain amount, then you get paid a, a second amount. The weekly wage function is the, given by this. So let's go with weekly wages. Well, H, this will be 18. Whole bunch of different things here. The weekly wage of this function is, is 12 bucks an hour for the first 40 hours. So the way we do it was like this. We say, he can't work negative time. That doesn't make sense. He works negative three hours, right? So he has to start off at zero. So we say zero all the way to the hours worked up to 40. So if we worked exactly 40 hours, that's still okay, right? Then we have anything above 40 would be the bottom equation. Can't you ever, they can't they work zero hours and get nothing? Yes. Um, so would you put a, like, yeah. Yeah. Um, I think that they did because you're not actually getting paid. Yeah. The weekly wage function is given by this, where H is the number of hours worked. Okay, let's jam with it here. So A, I need to find W of 30. If he worked 30 hours, how much would he get paid? Oh, this is 480. That makes more sense here. So real quick here, I want to just show you what this is all about right here. So he gets paid 18 bucks an hour afterwards. That's what that says, right? Now, when he moves on to, when he moves on to, um, to get 18 bucks an hour, he doesn't get 41 hours at 18 bucks an hour, right? It's just an extra little hour at 40 bucks, or at 18 bucks an hour, right? So that's why this little minus 40, it's H. But then we have to subtract 40 from it from the time that he worked already. And then the 480, where that's coming from, is that's his full wage of working 40 hours for 12 bucks an hour. So there's so 480 completes his uh, 12 bucks an hour, and it moves on to the 18 bucks an hour at a higher rate. Okay, so this one is just really teaching you which equation you're going to use for W of 30. Top equation, bottom equation, go. The top one. He hasn't reached the 40 hour limit yet. So we're going to use the top equation. In this case, it's going to be just 30. That's so our 12 times 30, $360. Done. We're good. So now we have uh, 40 hours. 40 hours. Maybe 12 times 40. And then now you know where that 480 came from. And if you are going to do, ever do payroll, yep, you're going to have to do this here. Then you have to also subtract uh, taxes. You're going to subtract all the other stuff out of it as well. So at 45, that means he just went above the 40 hour limit. And we're going to use the bottom equation now. So in this case, it's going to be 18 times 45 minus 40 for the full time worked. And we go from there. All right, a little bit of work to do here because it's an equation here. So how about uh, 45 minus 40 is 5. Anybody? 18 times 5. 90? I'm going to go with that. 90 plus 480. 
I'm gonna go 570, right? We've got uh, 100. Is that true? Okay, we're good. Got it. Okay. <laughs> Let's see uh, if you can break things up into multiples of 10 and manipulate it. So 180 times 10 would be 180, but uh, 10 is half of five. So half of 180 gets you back up to 90 or gets you back down to 90. So there's some fun little stuff you can do. Uh, the other thing, if you guys do uh, mental mathematics in your head, you know how we did this in grade school? And we always start off with with our right hand side, right? Or the right side. So five times four is four. Then we carry the four and we have five times four. And then we add the four and it gives you 90. If you're gonna do mental math, this is where people, notice if you do mental math real quick here, start actually doing the left side. So is that what you did? Five by 10. Perfect. Yeah, here it is. One times 10 is 50, we good? Five times that's 40, and there's your 90 that comes out of it. Right? So, even though mentally the fast way to do it is the backwards way, that's cool. And yep, I am so geeky that I bought uh, my kids, I bought them uh, like mental math videos, and we went through it together as a family. Yeah, I'm crazy like that. And so, we were learning all these little tricks that you can do. <laughs> they were little, so they still had some kind of confidence. Oh, dad knows what he's doing. No, that's cool. They still do. I haven't ruined that yet, so they still trust me. Okay, let's go with it. W of um, 50. All yours to do that one. Eighteen. That's gonna be fifty minus forty. Oh, there's my multiplying by ten right there. You should just do all the homework in class. It makes so much more sense. Let's just struggle with just a little bit here. All right. Final answer. Anybody? Six sixty. Okay. One hundred eighty plus four eighty. Right. Cool. Okay. The B value is says this. What happens if the company now increases their regular work pay to forty five hours a week? And then it hits the overtime pay afterwards. How does this change now? Wouldn't it just be 18 times H minus 45? You don't have 480 now. You have. Oh, uh, yeah, you have to figure out. You have to add 5 plus 12. Yeah. yeah. Plus so plus 5, five. five. Yeah, plus 5. Okay, cool, cool. So a few things first. Landon said uh, we've got to change this to 45 because we're subtracting the 45 out. That's cool. Uh, Abe, you said this is now what? It's 12 times 45, yeah. which is 540 because we've got to change that. Okay, anything to do at the end? Yeah, this has to change as well, right? These two pieces here, that has to correspond as well. So now I got myself this right here. So 12 bucks an hour still, but now the hours are up to 45. And then 18 times H minus 45 plus the 540. 540, is it? Okay. Boom. Is that good there? So I think that's after way. So there was Five hours where the pay got changed by six dollars, just be five times six and subtract it. Say again, say again. Where it's five hours they got changed from the eighteen dollars to uh -huh. eighteen dollars. See the difference between that is six dollars. So you can just do five times the difference, which is six, and then subtract that from the first one. Um see what I'm seeing you what you're saying is you can just add the sixty to this guy. Is that what you're saying? Because it's an extra six hours? No, because so it was so it used to be 40 hours and it was 45. Uh -huh. So five hours of extra pay got changed to normal pay. And the difference between the extra pay and the normal pay is six dollars. 
you can just do the five times the difference and subtract it from the first one. Again. Sure, yeah. Uh -huh. You can do that for computation purposes, except you still have to change your domains and all that stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I feel like they could have made that bottom one way simpler because it's really just your 12 hour, 12 times your hour pay mm -hmm. plus $6 times your time salary worth extra. Which is easier to magnify. Uh huh, true, yeah. Oh, just a tiny error. H is less than or equal to 45 in the top function. Oh, perfect. Yeah, thank you so much. That's not a tiny error. That's needed. Okay. Or else if a person works exactly 45 hours, they would not get paid because it, it's not okay, computed into error, it. Then. Yeah, uh -huh. it would be the main issue. So yes, uh, Isabel, yeah, they could have done it a little bit different. It could have been 12 at H plus 6H, right? And the H minus one. So Isabel is saying this here. They could have just added this six six extra dollars to the pay that's already here, and then that would have been much easier to do. Right. Um, the only thing is, you got to subtract. You got to still do this. You got to subtract the forty-five, right, to make sure that the hours are there. See, so let's see. Can you do that here, Isabel? Look at this. Because if that is the case. You're gonna plug in 45 into here. So I guess you're gonna to have to subtract oh, you 45. Oh, you don't have to do variable things. Gotcha. Uh-huh. It's so technically it's this right here. If this is true, then you do this one. If this is true, then you do this one. Mm -hmm. The yep, logical process. Absolutely. Okay. 1.6 homework is good. Everybody can finish it up now, right? Okay, so let's jam. So we're not gonna do 1.9. How about we finish up 1.8? Just a few little things that I figure you guys can do by yourself, but maybe we could do it together. So this would be 1.8 continued. Okay. So let's go with, uh, you guys talk to me. What example are we on 1.8? Okay. The four that we finished? Yeah. Just so our, our notes stay consistent here. Four. We're doing exercise four. Or we finished exercise four. Okay. I wasn't sure if he was still doing it. Okay. No, because my slide. Yeah, I'm on my one my one point nine slide. But let's go with it. Uh, exercise four. So let's do this new thing because it's called the composition of functions. Still, right? Let's kind of get a little more acclimated to this here. So off to the side. Quick little lecture is uh, you have a function called, uh, let me give you the definition here. So you have a function called h of x. And what h of x is, it's the nesting of two functions. The g of x is actually inside f of x. And uh, anybody seen or played with Russian nesting dolls? Yes, they're scary. <laughs> <laughs> So this is kind of like that. You have two functions or functions, one, one inside the other, hiding inside the other one. It could be scary. It's creepy babies that never end. They just never end. <laughs> okay, the other way of writing it is just F, and they got this new notation. It's like a, uh, it's a dot, but it's an open dot. Because in mathematics, we're running out of notations. So we just start using, reusing stuff, open dot, g and then of x but then the simplest version is just f and it's called composed with so we say f composed with g so there's your th three sort of different notations here so let me start this here so given uh, f of x uh, let's see how about uh, 3x plus 2 and g of x is x squared 
plus four. Oh, that would be a good start. Yeah. Is this just like a way of rearranging the functions? So I, what, is, what is this thing? Ah, this, uh, this technically is a way to do two functions at once. And so when I used to work, my first retail job who was at Mervyn's, and this was a long time ago. Um, what the person used to do at the cash registers, because they were technically they were the beginning of computer, the beginning of computers. Um, what he would do is he put a little program into the computer for all the sale prices the next day. And so instead of adding on a sale price to the regular price, he used to write a code that just gave a quick answer to it. So maybe we'll do it. We'll do an example like that as well. We're doing something. So let's go with it here. Let's do ABC, just the nuts and bolts of it here. So I want to find, I want to find F composed with G. You could write it like this if you like. So I'm going to write all three notations. We're good? F composed with G. F composed with G, and you declare the variable, which is the variable X. But the way we normally do it, we do it like this. This is the, it's called the operational definition. Woof, there it is. It's f of g of x. So let's go with it here. So what does, let's go Russian nesting dolls. Let's start at the bottom. The little tiniest one is g of x. What is g of x? And this is where we get into the whole concept of what does g of x do? g of x, it squares a number and that's four to it. That's what it does, right? Are the lights too bright or no? Do we need to turn on the lights turn or not? The lights. Yeah. So we see a string. This is the boy here. Yeah. Is that a little better? Yeah. All right. So what does G of X do? It squares a number, adds four. That's what it does. That's the operation of G. What does FX do? Triples the number, adds two. Good. So what we want to do is we want to mush these operations together. So what we do is we define what g of x is. g of x is x squared plus 4. That's what that is. Are we good? So notice, notice the, the notation right here and the notation right here. Our original function is f of x is 3x plus 2, right? What we want to do is we want to squeeze in x squared plus four into our variable. So what we're going to get is three x squared plus four plus two. Are we good there? Cool. Uh-huh, and then just simplify it and that's it. So we're going to multiply the three in. So three x squared plus 12 plus two and eventually 3x squared plus 14, done. So that is a faster process than squaring a number, adding four. When you're done with that, then you triple the number, then add two, good? This one, we're gonna square the number, multiply by three, add 14, and you're done. So it lowers your operation. And you've combined, you've composed, you've combined these two functions into a single function. That's what you've done technically. Okay, does that make sense, guys? Click here. Um, boom, we can go the other way. We don't have to go f of g. We can go g of f. That's no problem. So can you guys compute this one? We can combine functions any which way we like. All right, so I'm gonna to have to go on to the next slide here for this one here. So B is G of F, G of F of X. That's the, with the variable inside it. And then the operational definition here, the way we're gonna do it. Let's see how much time we got, okay. Uh, F of X, F of X does what again? Three X plus two. Perfect, okay, that's the definition for f, perfect. Let's plug this guy into our g function. 
And I think what a G function does, it squares the number, is that right? And adds four. So our number is three X plus two. Okay, good there. Now we have to multiply Yep, We still have to simplify this. We've got to multiply everything out and then add four to it. But you can really tell what's happening here. You can kind of see what uh, where the F function is, right? And then the G function is putting it on top. Okay, off to the side. You got to do this here, three X plus two. Anybody know how to do this really, really quick? Yeah. How do you guys multiply the X plus two? Mental math. Mental math, how do you do it? Are we good there? Let's see what we do. Uh, mental math, you guys ready? Let me go back to here. So we square this first one, boom, boom, boom. Good there. To get the middle terms, we multiply these guys together. So 3x times 2 is 6x, and then you double it. Good there? Anybody know why we double it? Perfect. Okay. Awesome. And then you take the two and we're good there. So mental math, are we good there? So we have this now. We have a 9x squared plus 12x plus 4 from our expansion. And then we still have an extra 4. So how about this? 9x squared plus 12x plus 8 is our doing the function by itself real quick here. And we've combined it into a single function. Dylan, are we good? So you multiply everything inside the function first, and then you multiply all of that by the variable outside of the function? Ooh, say it again, say it again. All right, all right. is what we're doing, uh, we're doing that like single time inside of the function, and multiply all of that by the variable outside of the function? Not so much multiplying it by it, but we're actually stuffing the nesting doll, the small one, into the bigger one. So notice this is the small nesting doll right here. And we stuffed it into the big nesting doll of x squared plus 4. So we stuffed this into here. And put the one function in place of x. Uh huh. Good. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and if you need it, uh, guys, real quick, some of you guys are auditory learners, some of you guys are visual learners, right? So talk to me because if the talking helps through the process to sort of make things clear in your head, please do. Okay, C, we got one more of these guys here. Yes, you can, if you like, you can compose a function with itself. No problem. F compose with F. So it just means that you are trying to figure out a formula that does this function twice. All right, where's this at a computer programming? Um, it, do you guys, anybody done computer programming, which you have to do the iteration over and over and over and over again, right? Usually those are for loops, like for, uh -huh. I'm trying to explain this for people that understand, but it's, you have an interval so however many times you want it to be yeah, uh -huh. sure. uh, so the way that the way it's less than a hundred yeah is as long as as long as this number is less than a hundred do this yeah uh -huh. we'll do that for that absolutely yeah. multiply this by two and come back to the loop again yeah and then it goes and you plug in a number yeah. let's say 10 right mm -hmm. 10 goes to 20 then to 40 80 and then once it's at 160 it stops and gets you yeah, absolutely uh-huh so in the computer science language, um, it actually does the progression over and over and over again, right? Mm -hmm. uh, because you have a certain uh, formula there. Uh, what, what happens as we, let's do this example here. When we were trying to find the answer to pi, so pi is defined to be, oh, what is pi, guys? A number. A number, very true. It's actually a ratio. Ratio of what? <laughs> Do with the circle. Yes, uh-huh. Something has to do with the circle. It's uh, how big your circumference is divided by the diameter. So that's what pi is equal to. We good? Now pi is something called a irrational number, which we actually don't know the exact decimal expansion of it or the exact 
fraction expansion. We don't know. But we say it's approximately 3.14159. That's at least how many digits I know. And it keeps on going. But the decimal expansion keeps on going forever, forever, forever. It never stops. So in the 1970s and early 80s, when computers were sort of starting up, the fun part with Pi was to figure out who can find the uh, the most accurate digits of Pi the fastest. We good? So this was uh, computer systems that were the size of this room, right? They were to be crunching numbers at uh, like two megabytes. So in that case, what we wanted to do, how do you increase it? And so we wrote we wrote these guys. We tried to loop formulas within themselves so that the formulas become faster and faster. And so if you go to a website, I think we are up to 20 billion decimals of pi at this point. And, and uh, there's a website that even says, find your birth date in pi. And you can go and find your birth date in pi or any other, because it's just the realization of numbers here. But that was the whole point. In computer science language, you want to create formulas that get you faster results faster and faster. That's it. It's, just expediency. So you're combining things together. Okay, are we good there? Kind of cool. All right, let's let's do some work. All right, F composed with F. We are trying to make this guy a faster system. We're going to make a formula that does F twice, really, really fast. And so the F function is, what is it again? It is 3x plus 2. And we're going to stuff 3x plus 2 into 3x plus 2. This is going to look funky. So this is going to look like this. Boom. Are we good there? So notice there's a 3x plus 2 as an inside function. Notice there's a 3x plus 2 as an outside function. All right. <laughs> What's the fastest way to compute 3x plus 2? Let's see. Multiply the 3 in. This is 9x plus 6 plus 2. 9x plus 8 is the faster version of doing 3x plus 2 twice. Okay, are we good? And you guys talking. When are we out here? 1035? Is it 1035? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so we should stop for today. Okay, we are going to continue with 1.9 on Monday, but that should give you guys enough stuff to do 1.8 homework here.